We are back at 102. This is Central Valley Talk Live. I'm Austin Reed coming to you from our Tower District studios inside the Mike Briggs building. Hopefully your Thursday is going well so far. Hey, our next guests joining us live in our Tower District studios today. Give it up for Oyuna Hospice. Summer? Tina. Whoa. Who's Summer? Summer, oh, she's back there. She's she, she's a smart one. She's hiding, in the corner she's hiding in the corner with the dog, <laughs> waiting to pet the turtle. I know. We've got the tortoise in the back. He yeah, wants he wants some loving. Yeah. Uh, okay, so Tina. Yes. All right, and of course uh, Richard Part. Uh, Richard, you've been on the show before. I have. Um, in other fashions. Yeah, so. I was here with the Air Force. I was here in November with Tina for Hospice Appreciation Month on behalf of the UNA, and so we're always thrilled to come back and just spend time with you and uh, and just educate and share with what we do yeah. with the public. Well, it, it is a new year. Um, we've got the uh, Omicron floating around. A lot of people are getting sick right now. Um, in hospice, though, that is it's very critical what what's going on. Um, where do things stand right now? Well, in regards to all, give my opinion, and you can give yours. I think that one of the things that we've seen is uh, the reaction to Omicron, uh, to COVID in general, that so many skilled nursing facilities, so many assisted living facilities, because of the contagious aspect of it, they lock down and they're not letting families visit, visit their loved ones. Um, and when you're dealing with a hospice patient, which kind of has a predetermined mm-hmm. lifespan or we know it's going to end sooner, uh, that's a real problem for the family. They're not able to spend that time. And so one of the things that Teen and I and Summer and our team are working hard to do is to actually get patients out of those facilities, okay. home with their loved ones, and provide the really the same care that they would get at the facility, right. at home, via our agency and agencies we partner with. That's huge. That's it. It is very huge. And, um, you know, with the whole COVID and Omicron that's here, um, usually anybody with COVID qualifies under the hospice diagnosis because, you know, um, if they don't pass away, of course, they get better and they graduate. But those are services that we can do and manage those patients at home. Um, it's a benefit covered at 100% with Medicare, Medi-Cal, okay. um, and other insurances. There's no out-of-pocket cost to the family. Uh, we basically provide all the di- durable medical equipment, hospital bed, walker chairs, shower chairs, everything that they would need at home, mm-hmm. we would provide. Uh, we provide incontinence supplies, diapers, wipes, bed pads, gloves. I mean, everything that they would need, we provide. And our staff will go in into the house a um, couple, up to four times a week through our different um, staffing, which is spiritual support, right. um, social worker, shower aides that go out two to three times a week to help bathe those patients, shave them, uh-huh. things like that. So it, it's a lot of support for those families and the loved ones at home. Yeah, Tina just hit on something. One of the things that we realized, I mean, we all have a a time that we're going to go. Just sometimes, you know, a hospice patient, that means that either the diagnosis is too too extreme for a doctor to even treat anymore, or we live in a day and age that a lot of times the treatment Mm -hmm. is worse than the disease. And so patients or the families will say, I don't want to do this anymore. And so hospice comes in and provides all of the care, both on the physical aspect, the emotional aspect, the mental. I mean, there's so much that goes on, not only with the patient, but with the family. And uh, Tina and I have a, a very unique scenario that both of us, our moms, were on hospice mm. with the UNA. So we know oh. firsthand what it's like. Both of our moms have gone home to the Lord. And so we can not only sympathize with the scenario, we can actually empathize with the scenario. We've lived it, we've walked it, and that enables us uh, to provide even additional care because we know what's going on, but it also fuels us to make sure we're the best. And I I will tell you honestly, as a pastor, wouldn't lie, we are the best. I've worked for other hospice, and there is just no comparison as to what we do what we stand for and it's a real team effort absolutely Mm -hmm. absolutely we cover 60 miles within fresno so we're doing madera parlier Mm -hmm. coarse gold oakhurst Mm -hmm. within 60 miles we support if there is a loved one at home that um, people are taking care of 
um, dementia, Alzheimer's, that decline is so quick, you know, where they're weak or they're requiring 24-hour assistance. Um, those are the patients that qualify and these, these families don't know. Um, we have the ability to drive out our doctor and have them assess those patients, get that order, and our team is in there within hours mm -hmm. of going out to assess a patient. So, yeah, if there is a family in need or you feel that, you know, it, it may be something that you guys can qualify for, give our office a call. We're 24-7. I'm 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, I meet with every family, and I do take the doctor out for those visits. So if anybody's ever, you know, wondering if they do qualify, just give our office a call. I, I, real quick, uh, I just realized that you're wearing green. So uh, our viewers are seeing kind of a transparent uh, situation. Oh, I'm yes. looking at that. <laughs> I, I just noticed that. So it's kind of funny. Anyways, that's that's why uh, Tina looks the way she does. because we have a green that screen. That is <laughs> fantastic. Hey, it's memorable. It is memorable. And it also gives me shield to... Uh, Maybe these are a little later. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. There we go. There we go. So beans are coming, everybody. <laughs> so I do. How I don't know how much longer we have. A couple minutes. Okay, I did want to say Tina just hit on a on something that to me is very important. In normal hospital or medical settings, when a family has a circumstance and they place a call if it's after hours or on the weekends it usually goes to a call center that call center determines if it's worthy or not to go to a nurse or a doctor we do not offer we have nurses 24 7 okay all the time and that is a huge comfort to the families because most people they don't they don't know what hospice is they don't know how to deal with any of this and we we understand that and so we want to make sure that they have support mm -hmm. guidance help whatever it is that that they that they need yeah um as we are heading into obviously a brand new year anything um different you guys are working on any exciting changes or announcements um well one we continue to increase our footprint with the veterans administration and and serving veterans we're seeing a large percentage of veteran population that are vietnam based and such end up their lifespan is a little shorter so a lot of them are ending up on hospice and so we're actually going around and doing in service uh veteran in service with a lot of uh, skilled nursing and assisted living facilities on how to care for veterans okay um, we continue to expand our team so we can expand the number of patients we can serve. We would rather be prepared and be proactive than all of a sudden get more patients and be reactive and be understaffed. Mm -hmm. And so we're very proactive in our approach on that. And so those are the primary things, just continuing to look for ways to better serve the community that we're blessed to serve. And we were talking, too, a little bit about, um, you know, there's so many misconceptions and uh, stories out there that need to be told so hopefully you guys can come on maybe once a month and just do a little absolutely yeah I, yeah and we'll we'll address that next time there's so many people who have a misconception as to either what hospice isn't or they have not a full understanding of of when what it is yeah. and they think they think that oh the person's got to be you know 24 hours away from death when we have patients who have been on service with us for up to four years a year two years three years and okay. so that's where i love the education component because we can come in and support either the patient the patient and their family and really make a difference and whether it is one day mm -hmm. or four years. thousand days <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. yeah um people can connect with uh with you guys online at ounahospice.com and um, people can call 559-374-2726. That well, is right? correct, yeah. yes. Okay, very good. Uh, Richard, good to see you again. Good to Thanks see you, too. On. No, thank, always honored to be here. Tina, thank you. Thank Even you. though you're transparent, I will make sure your not shirt to is next. awesome. <laughs> it, it's is. a beautiful shirt. It really thank is. You. Appreciate it. <laughs> we can thank see you. it, but they can't. All right. Thanks again, guys. Thank, thank you. you. I'm Austin Reed. You're watching Central Valley Talk.